Well, see, again, I mean, and I told Brian this, it's no surprise. I said, I just fundamentally disagree with your concept of this character and how you use him. This is not a video devoted to defending The Last Jedi. I stand by my feelings that it was not only good, but that it's actually one of the best films in the Star Wars franchise. This video is instead dedicated to a very specific criticism that has been leveled at the film. It was released on Blu-ray, DVD, and 4K Ultra Blu-ray at the end of March, and while I was revisiting the film and exploring the various included bonus material, I found myself focusing on one of the things that drew real ire from fans, especially those older fans who were so drawn to the story of those original three films. Now, before I go any further, I want to warn you that this video is going to be full of spoilers for all the Star Wars films, pretty much. Maybe we won't get into Rogue One at all. So, spoilers. After this point, it's spoilers. Spoilers and spoilers. There's going to be spoilers. While I found a lot of the complaints and criticisms aimed at The Last Jedi to frankly be ranging from questionable to outright ridiculous, there was a particular one that I actually understand. I don't think it's correct, but I understand it. A lot of people feel as strongly as Mark Hamill did in the opening of this video. Now, certain people latched onto those words and misrepresented Mark greatly as slamming the entire film and hating The Last Jedi. But that's not what Hamill has said, and he's actually been very careful to emphasize that his problem is specifically with the portrayal of Luke. He felt the other characters were getting good storylines, but Luke, Luke's storyline was not his vision of Luke Skywalker. But Hamill also has a rather mature approach. He, he doesn't own Luke Skywalker. He instead says, Now, having said that, I'll do everything within my power to realize your vision. Because, you know, it's not my character to, to decide. It belongs to other people. They just rent it out to me. But for a lot of fans, they felt the same as Hamill. This was not their Luke Skywalker. Unlike Hamill, Star Wars fans tend to feel a certain ownership of these characters. They're ours. We want them to be heroes. The Luke Skywalker we met in the first Star Wars film back in 1977, before there was a trilogy, before it became Episode Four: A New Hope, he was an unabashed dreamer. He wanted to be more than a farmer on a moisture evaporator farm. He wanted to fight the evil empire. He wanted to join his friends in this fight. He wanted to be a part of the rebellion. Luke was an optimist, lacking really any ounce of cynicism. Han Solo's mercenary attitude shocks and appalls Luke. They could use a good pilot like you. You're turning your back on them. What good's the reward if you ain't around to use it? Besides, attacking that battle station ain't my idea of courage. It's more like suicide. All right. Well, take care of yourself, Han. But I guess that's what you're best at, isn't it? But Luke wanted to believe in the good of pretty much everybody. He believed that Han was more than just a greedy rogue that was in it for the cash. And he was vindicated in that. What? Yeah, Look out! And upon discovering that the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Vader, was actually his father, 
he becomes certain that his father can be redeemed, saved from the dark side. So, you have accepted the truth. I've accepted the truth that you were once Anakin Skywalker, my father. That name no longer has any meaning for me. It is the name of your true self you've only forgotten. I know there is good in you. The Emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. And Luke is proven right yet again. The Luke Skywalker we all knew was a noble hero, an aspiring knight who was mastering the tradition of the Jedi Knights, becoming skilled in the Force as old Ben Kenobi started to teach him before his death and Yoda continued later. And then he died. On the other hand, this is not to say that Luke lacked any darkness. When he first learns that Vader is his father, he's shaken. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. No. No. It's not true. That's impossible. And he really actually gives up. Uh, he, he sees his only options are accept his father's offer to rule the galaxy with him or die. So he lets himself fall. There's no reason to think even remotely that Luke was sitting there going, I'll drop down and I'll bet I can, you know, fall into this shaft and save myself. No, I, I feel very confident that Luke expected fully to die and was, would rather die than, you know, join his father. But it, he, he gives in to the despair. But even more so, it's when he fights his father in the finale of The Return of the Jedi. He's not merely tempted to give in to his anger. He fails. Luke gives in to his anger when he realizes his friends and family are on the verge of annihilation. In spite of telling the Emperor all these heady things about how the Emperor would fail, he tries to strike down the Emperor. And that's what the Emperor wanted him to do in the first place. Give in to the anger. Kill the Emperor. Give in to the dark side. And the Emperor nearly wins in his goal of corrupting Luke. In fact, it's only after Luke has nearly killed his own father that he pauses and regains his strength and resolve to fight the darkness in both himself and of the Emperor. You're coming with me. I'll not leave you here. I've got to save you. You already have. And for a lot of us, that's where it ended. Luke on a high note. Luke vindicated in believing his father was able to be turned from the dark side, and the stories we got after that came to tell us how Luke managed to successfully, you know, become a Jedi Knight, and he and Leia both uh, sired children of their own, uh, her with Han and Luke with other people, I believe. Uh, I'll admit, I'm kind of vague on I didn't read a lot of those uh, extended universe comics and books so so if I'm getting any of that wrong just let me know and so 30 years later Disney has acquired Lucasfilm and their properties they announced plans for new Star Wars films as well as a new Indiana Jones film at least one I'm assuming they're hoping to do more um Though they did recently announce that this would probably be Harrison Ford's last Indiana Jones one, and for a lot of people, they might have even hoped that uh, The Last Crusade was going to be his last one. But I'm, I'm not going to disparage Crystal Skull here. Uh, we will just move on. For Star Wars, the promise was a new trilogy focusing on the continuing adventures of our intrepid heroes in a new generation, as well as alternating with one-off films set in the Star Wars universe. They brought in J.J. Abrams to guide the new trilogy, and there's a certain irony to this as he had rebooted the Star Trek franchise a few years prior, and a common complaint was that he made Star Trek more, well, Star Wars. So The Force Awakens was the beginning of the passing of the baton. We discovered that even though the Rebellion had been successful, a secret organization called the First Order had risen through the New Republic and was now kind of 
becoming prominent. They were ready to make their move. Princess Leia was now a general, and she was running the new version of the Rebellion uh, against the First Order. Uh, Her relationship with Han Solo had fallen apart after their son Ben turned to the dark side. Luke Skywalker had gone missing, and this served as the primary motivating force for the new characters. So they were trying to get a map uh, leading to Luke Skywalker back to the uh, back to the rebellion. Now, Han Solo actually has, talks about how he's changed. Luke Luke changed, you know him. He has no trouble now believing in the Force. He knows that the force is real. He does not try and deny that. And he even goes a step further showing a certain sense of optimism that he might be able to reach Ben within Kylo Ren. That he might be able to bring him back from the darkness. And one of the cool things The Force Awakens did was it showed the light side of the force as every bit as tempting as the dark side. And you had Kylo Ren talking throughout the movie about feeling that tug towards the light. I'm being torn apart. I want to be free of this pain. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. Even the Supreme Emperor Snoke, uh, or Supreme Leader Snoke, commented on being able to see that. And so Han is trying to get him to come to his side, back to, you know, come back to your mother and me, let's... And he's, of course, betrayed, which creates this really tragic moment for fans of the original films to see Han Solo get stabbed with a lightsaber. You know, it's not not, uh, something you were really kind of hoping or expecting to see. So, the film ends with the Rebellion completing the map, and the Force-sensitive Ray took off with Chewbacca and R2-D2 to find Luke. The Force Awakens ends with Ray holding Luke's original lightsaber that was lost in Emperor Strikes Back towards Luke. And The Last Jedi, well, picks that moment up with this. The Last Jedi reveals a Luke who went into hiding after the loss of Ben to the dark side. This Luke is a bitter cynic. And worse, he shuns the use of the Force. He believes the Jedi Order should end, and (laughs) that means he'll stay away from the fray. Luke rejects the idea of his celebrity, and he does not want to be the legendary Luke Skywalker. He plans to die and take the ways of the Jedi with him, and he doesn't merely shun the use of the Force, he has completely cut himself off to the Force. And this really bothered people. And I get it. It's hard to see the idealistic young Luke, now older and sadly bitter, indifferent to the Rebellion. This is, in some ways, not unlike 1992's Unforgiven. Many people expressed discomfort with seeing Clint Eastwood, the iconic cowboy, struggling to get on a horse or to have trouble hitting a target. It simply felt wrong to see him suddenly be incapable of doing the things he used to naturally do. And yet this is part of what gives the film its power. William Money is a man who turned his back on his wicked ways and his skills have atrophied. The Last Jedi reveals that Luke saw the dark side of the Force growing at an incredible rate within young Ben Solo. Luke looked upon this, and for a single moment, he despaired. He, for only a second, contemplated killing his nephew. Unlike the Return of the Jedi, he actually came to his senses before striking a blow. Because remember, in Return of the Jedi, he tried to strike a blow. Darth Vader stopped him from pulling it off. But in that moment, Ben awoke and reacted instinctively. This is the incident that drove Solo to become Kylo Ren, and he destroyed Luke's Jedi training school, killing all but a few students who then went and joined him, which we have not actually seen. I don't really... They talk about the Knights of Ren, but uh, we haven't really seen what became of any of those people. 
And it makes sense that this failure broke Luke. That Luke started to see the Jedi as part of the problem and not part of the solution. And initially, when he sees just how Force-sensitive Rey is, he becomes worried. And yet, Luke starts to see that he may have been wrong. Both in rejecting the Force and walking away from the inspiration of the legendary Luke Skywalker. (laughs) Rey ultimately rekindles this spark of hope within Luke. And that leads to a dramatic showdown with Kylo Ren. Luke proves just how strong he is with the Force by projecting himself across the galaxy. This would have been a far less exciting moment if Luke had already been running around with Leia in The Force Awakens. Now, sure, as a fan, it would have been fun to see Luke, Leia, and Han all together again. But it's Luke's rebirth of his optimism that makes the confrontation with Kylo Ren work. His apology for failing Ben Solo, his promise echoing Ben Kenobi's words to Darth Vader. No. Strike me down in anger and I'll always be with you. Just like your father. But there's an acknowledgement this time around that Ben Solo may truly be gone, that Luke can't save him. And Luke's Not going to try and talk him into being saved. He's going to let him make his own choice. As I said, I get the reason people bristle at the heroic Luke having given up hope. I recall the Star Wars Dark Empire comic book series. The miniseries, originally published by Dark Horse, had what seemed to be an even more controversial choice. Luke, in an attempt to defeat the Empire, which had not been defeated by the Rebellion uh, in the series, uh, the end of Jedi was really just the beginning of more conflict. He gives himself over to the dark side of the Force willingly and joins the Emperor. Because, oh yeah, by the way, the Emperor was cloning himself. Uh, This could be a whole other thing. Um, And when he does, he's overcome and becomes the Emperor's replacement for Darth Vader. Luke does eventually return to the light side. But this didn't really cause complaints. People didn't go, that's not Luke Skywalker. Uh, Dark Empire is kind of an iconic Star Wars series. And frankly, bitter and angry Luke seems far less controversial than Darth Luke. But there you have it. But another reason the scenario we get in The Last Jedi regarding Luke makes the most sense? Well, that's something actually outside of the Star Wars universe. I call it the J.J. Abrams conundrum. Abrams threw out a bunch of vague mysteries. Among them, why had Luke disappeared? What's he waiting for? Why did he leave it all behind? Clearly, Disney planned to fulfill the age-old goal of a nine-film series. Except they pretty much threw out any plans Lucas might have had, and that in and of itself is fine, but they did not plan out three films. Each film is really being played by ear. Is Rey a Skywalker? Well, Ryan Johnson, of course, reveals that no, in fact, she's not connected to anyone in the earlier films, actually. Abrams didn't provide a map or answers to Ryan Johnson to work with. He left it to Johnson to come up with his own answers. Now, the fact is, if you're going to continue the story of Star Wars in any form, the success of the Rebellion and Return of the Jedi could not last forever, so conflict would be necessary for our heroes to deal with. Uh, that, that's a given. I, I, you know, they didn't have a choice there. And Ryan Johnson asked the question that all the people who are so upset by his choice don't seem to be trying to ask. Just why is Luke on this remote planet? Why abandon his sister and friends? He knew of the growing darkness. Why did he decide to take himself out of the fight? Johnson notes that another option would have been cowardice. 
But you know, frankly, that'd be far worse than what we got. A Luke scared to fight? Ugh. But a Luke so disillusioned that he rejects everything he holds dear, he cuts himself off from the Force? This works, and in part because it goes so hard against the Luke we want to see. And you know, this also explains why he's unaware of Han Solo's death, or the actions of the First Order. And this allows for a truly powerful return for Luke Skywalker. Luke goes out with a bang, in one sense, and yet on his own terms. Much as Obi-Wan allows Vader to kill him, Luke reaches a state of peace with the Force. He rejoins the Force, not merely in a figurative sense, he literally fades into the Force. This is an end that Luke deserves. He regains his faith, he regains his strength. Towards the beginning, I talked about how Hamill expressed aggressive feelings about Johnson's choice of storyline for Luke. That it's not the Luke Skywalker he had lived. But he also realized that Luke is not his personal property. And I'm thankful that he could step back and see it that way. Because this is definitely one of Hamill's best performances in general. And it's absolutely his best Star Wars performance. I love Mark Hamill. His interaction with fans is genuinely charming. He can be kind of snarky. And he cares about respecting the things that fans hold dear to their hearts. I get why Hamill and fellow fans struggled with the Luke Skywalker we meet in The Last Jedi. But Hamill and those fans are wrong. That is our Luke Skywalker. And it was a powerful and worthwhile story to tell. I confess, if Ryan Johnson had asked me, I would have pushed for Luke to live uh, through this film to be there for a big ninth film showdown. I think that closing out the new trilogy with the death of Luke would have been kind of more poetic. Though Luke did promise... See you, bro. So maybe he's going to be back as a force ghost, you know, like uh, Yoda was in Last Jedi. Oh, spoiler. But either way, the Luke of the Last Jedi makes sense in light of the original trilogy. Heroes fail, they fall, they lose faith. They sometimes need to rekindle their flame. And I thank Ryan Johnson for the choice to risk fan anger and give us that story of Luke Skywalker getting to go out like a Jedi Knight. So thanks for watching, and if you want to yell at me, you can comment below, or you can also go to leave comments on the trippingthroughgateways.com website, or you can also get to me through Twitter at, at Tom Wade. Oh, and completely unrelated uh, to anything else in, in this video, I love this Kylo Ren and Hux moment. All firepower on their speeders. Concentrate all fire on the speeders! 